I hate people. But almost every job requires teamwork, the ability to listen and communicate. Um, if we pull together in the same direction, it's better for all of us. Yeah, they could be fighting over them bones. They're not fighting, they're smiling. In the picture, maybe, but in reality... The Office, created by Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, explores the agony of interacting with other people, specifically in a workplace where you can't choose your company. No, I didn't like it over there. I couldn't breathe, you know? No, I mean, I had to get out. I couldn't stand it. It's so confined, you know what I mean? And I needed the space. Irritation isn't fatal, but because of social expectations, you can't get away from it. So The Office documents the relationship between the victims of irritation, Tim and Dawn, and their perpetrators, David and Gareth. David Brent, the manager of Warnham Hog, has a talent for annoying everyone. Like this person, Kojak. <laughs> David, that's what we call him. Watch his face. But why? Why would anyone choose to be annoying? Well, partially David is unaware that he is. He overlooks basic body language and facial expressions, and that's frustrating for ordinary people. David hijacks a conversation twice on Tim's birthday. What's the difference between your wages and your penis? I can find you lots of women who will blow your wages. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. Why has that happened? Yeah. Lock up your daughters. It's not David's moment, but he interrupts and makes it about himself, which alienates his coworkers. Just by looking at their faces, you can tell they don't appreciate his presence or his jokes. Exterminate. <laughs> But David doesn't accept reality, because that would damage his self-esteem, so he never has to question if he's welcome. Who wants to go for a drink tomorrow to show? Yeah? Anyone? But when people like you, they make an effort to be around you. A couple of mates of mine are going down to Yates's. Um, the wine lodge? Classy. <laughs> I'm joking. But... Well, I was wondering if uh, you would like to come down with us. David is surrounded by people that are nice, attractive, and charismatic, but he doesn't learn from their popularity. Instead, he commits to his insecurities. He's afraid of being disliked, so he conceals it with arrogance. If we're handing out insults for being fat, let's have a go at him. Look at him. Why? And he's got glasses. Let's call four eyes as well. Why don't we call him fatty, fatty toad boy if we're, you know, at least start on him and then move on. And all of these traits are applicable to Gareth. He misses visual cues, he interrupts conversations, and he's definitely arrogant. Well, it's massive and it ain't made of plastic. <laughs> but I want to know how ordinary people react to irritation. Everybody's sway is somewhere between passive and aggressive. Initially, characters have to deal with boring conversations. What did you watch on telly last night? I didn't watch telly, I watched the video. I watched that peak practice. Yeah, I've never seen it. Bloody repeat. Uh, it's annoying, isn't it? Not for me, I hadn't seen it. But that's to be expected. Awkward small talk happens when people are trapped in a room together. It's circumstantial. But David wants reciprocity. If he tells a joke, he wants people to laugh. If he does something good, he wants to be admired. But that never happens. David invites his staff out to lunch, but he has nothing to say. Good. It's all right. He starts a conversation that eventually fizzles out. Well, I think. <sighs> See you later. See you later. Take care. And that's probably what his coworkers want. They don't know how to interact with him either, so they just look away, keep quiet, and wait till it's over. But eventually, irritations add up. What are you doing? What are you doing? That's ridiculous. The critical moments on The Office are when characters can't take it anymore and they confront someone else. Tim's solution is to prank Gareth. Hello, guys, Keenan. Cock! <laughs> Thank you! Thank you. Oh, glorious. It's an easy way to release tension without actually addressing his behavior. But what if you're dealing with more than just trivialities? What if you're dealing with actual hostility? When you start getting a knife, mate, you can take the mickey out of my right? <laughs> Mate, I'm not having a go, I'm just, you know. No, 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 no listen, mate, I don't mean have a go at you, no, you're fine. Is. You're fine, all right? Fair enough, we no worries. Had a coffee. No yeah. worries. Dawn's boyfriend, Lee, has a classic passive-aggressive attitude. He tries to be civil, but his intentions are antagonistic. It's like a big, happy sign that says, stop flirting with my girlfriend. Is this a wind-up? 
Yeah, sorry, mate. Don't no, do that, man. Having a bit Don't... of laugh you, right? I'm sorry. I wouldn't blame you. She's a good-looking girl. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Come on. All right. The message is clear. But not clear enough. The breaking point happens when nothing changes. David's boss, Neil, has to navigate the same escalation. Awkward small talk. I was a little bit drunk. <laughs> the most of the week, as I remember. <laughs> Doesn't sound like me, does it? <laughs> Passive aggression. You're a good bloke, Dave, and if there's a problem, I'd rather discuss it sensibly and have to have these little chats, all right? Good shake on it. Great, thank you. And eventually, a hard line. Let's agree to disagree. No, let's agree that you agree with me. And nobody wants to be in that situation. It's easier to let things go because confronting someone can be just as disruptive. It's the equivalent of spanking a child in public. Don't talk to me like you've forgotten who's in charge. Let me remind you, I'm your boss, OK? Yeah, just, just try and think things through. But sometimes we need to speak up because acknowledging conflict is cathartic. I think the pressure to be submissive is a larger byproduct of the workplace. Every day the employees work in a depressing environment at a failing company with no end in sight. So the job cultivates complacency. Yeah, I could easily roll a six. No problem, I could roll a six. I could also roll a one. Okay, so I think sometimes just leave the dice alone. Tim is afraid of leaving Warnham Hog, but he's also afraid of progressing too. It's only, only temporary. I thought that about this job and I've been here for <laughs> Um, Tim and Dawn clearly love each other. But every time he asks her out, he damages their friendship. Dawn, I was just wondering, uh, now you split up with Lee, would you like to come out for a drink with me? Um, I, I haven't split up with him. It's a risk. And keep in mind, it happens after he tries to quit. I can't take uh, uh, any more of this nonsense. I can't take another boring call about Spa White Index Board at 2.30 a ton. So, 2.60. No, you're a twat. Okay, shut up. Shut up. I will, I'll give you my... Let's uh, do it after. Look, we'll we'll work out my notice. Okay, right now, I'm going. Goodbye. So there's a correlation between their job and their relationships. Dawn is with Lee because of financial security. What about reliability or um, someone paying the mortgage or someone who's never been out of work? Those are the more important practical things, you know, in reality. That's why Tim's Christmas gift is so powerful. It's a reminder that you don't have to settle. That despite so many irritating people, there is someone that makes life a little easier. The Office isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial about how to overthrow corporations or make friends. But maybe we can learn something from these characters. How to listen, how to deal with people, and how to say what we mean. In the end, there's no great leap forward, but maybe a little peace in their lives. Gareth isn't sociable, but he has a good job. David isn't mature, but he's able to stand up to his friend. Chris, <laughs> yeah. why don't you fuck off? And Tim and Dawn aren't self-employed, but they're happy together. All it takes is the courage to do something different. You can't change circumstances. You know. Sorry. Excuse me. 